when you create an instance of a class, the common language runtime will actually create an instantiation chain. Every class in the entire hierarchy from your subclass all the way up to the class object will be instantiated when your class is instantiated. This instantiation chain allows each individual element to call into its parent. It's important that each chain is, is individual and separate because each chain may actually be maintaining its own instance data. So this gives you kind of a different way of looking at things. When you create an instance of a class in C Sharp, you are always creating at least two objects. You are base class itself and class object. Okay? Because remember that every class derives at some level from object. However, if your class were to derive from another class which derives from object, then when you create an instance of your class, it actually creates an instance of three classes. As in this example, assume that we have class B, which derives from class A. And A implicitly derives from class object. That means that when I create an instance of class B, I'm actually creating an instance of three different classes, class B, class A, and class object. Now, how does this chain actually get created? Well, remember that every single class has a constructor. So in order to create the chain, the common language runtime will implicitly call the constructor of the parent class. This makes some assumptions, though, on the organization of the constructor. Every derived class will therefore will implicitly call the default constructor of its base class. Remember that that default constructor is the one that doesn't accept any parameters. Now, as long as there is a constructor that doesn't accept any parameters in the, in the class that you're deriving from, then you don't have to worry about creating any explicit calls yourself. Everything will work out just fine. But let's assume for a second that you had a base class that did not have a zero-parameter constructor. Remember that if you create any constructor of your own, the compiler will not create a zero-parameter constructor for you. So if you derive a class from that base class, and that derived class attempts to call the zero-parameter constructor of the base class, what happens? Well, if that zero-parameter constructor doesn't exist, then that's going to cause a problem. So what we would need to do then in our derived class is using a keyword called base, we need to call a specific explicit constructor of that base class. Now, if that base class does not have any accessible default constructors available, then you basically must make some sort of, of explicit call in order to get this to work out. If for some reason there are no callable, there are no accessible constructors at all, then you've got, you've got an instantiation problem here. Now, I've added a few little elements here to my dog class. First of all, you'll notice that I've encapsulated a little data member here called color, a private string color. I've also provided an explicit constructor for the dog class. Note the constructor accepts a single parameter, a string called color. What I'm going to be doing in this constructor is simply assigning the value that's passed into the constructor to the encapsulated data member called color. Then I've created a method called getColor basically an accessor method, which returns to me the current value of the color that's stored in the private string variable. Finally, we still have our speak method, so the speak method returns the string bark bark, exactly the same way as it did before. Now technically in this case, because I did create an explicit constructor in the dog class, that default or zero parameter constructor is not created by the compiler. Therefore, this dog cl class now has only one constructor, the one that accepts a single string parameter. So if I wanted to derive the poodle class from the class dog, I'm going to have to do a little bit of constructor magic. Since my class poodle extends dog, and dog has a constructor that requires a parameter, I'm going to have to provide that parameter to the base class constructor. Now, without this statement right here, the colon base color, then what's happening implicitly is that the uh, class poodle is going to make a call up to the zero parameter constructor of class dog.
However, since no zero parameter constructor exists, that would cause an error. So instead, we use the base keyword to identify the constructor that we want to call. In this case, I'm specifying explicitly that I want to call the base class constructor that accepts a single value, in this case, a string. Now, in my example, all I'm doing is taking the color value that I'm providing in the constructor of the Poodle class and passing that right up to the base class constructor. No other work here really has to be done. Technically, though, since the get color and the speak methods are both public methods of the dog class, they will inherit into the Poodle class, and I should be able to access them through an instance of Poodle. Well, let's go back to our make Poodle class again, create a new instance, and try this out. When I created my instance of the Poodle class, notice that I've passed in the value black. This is a black Poodle. That's the constructor for the Poodle class. Remember, what this constructor does, it takes this string value and simply passes that up to the constructor of the base class dog. Then I'm going to use the getColor method and the speak method to output the information about the poodle. This is a black poodle that hopefully says bark, bark. Let's take a look and see how this works when we run it. Executing this, we get exactly the results that we would expect. We have a black poodle that says bark, bark. So that means that the black string was passed up successfully to the base class dog. What would happen at this point if I went back to the Poodle class and I removed this call up to the base class constructor? Let's comment that out and see what happens in this example. Well, this gave us some build errors. I've got some problems at compile time. Let's take a look. According to the description here at the bottom, it tells me that there's no overload for the method dog, which is our constructor, that takes zero arguments. This is the C-sharp way of telling us that there is not a zero argument or a zero parameter constructor for the dog class. Therefore, my object couldn't be instantiated in this example. So what we've seen here is that if we use our own custom constructors, we may have some additional work that we need to do in order to make sure that we don't have any problems with the constructor chaining. But most importantly, I think what we see here is the relationship between the various classes that are part of this inheritance chain. And we can understand by looking at this that when you create an instance of a class, that's not isolated. You're actually creating an entire set of instances.